Today, we're going to look at water in California, which is a huge topic, as you know. I mean, it's all about California, how much rain we get, how much snow we get. They're skiing in the mountains. We had a very wet November. Then it shut off. And we got into December. It was very dry. And then, bam, the last week, looking good. I'm meteorologist Bill Martin. I do meteorology and weather forecasting for the state of California and the West Coast. Every morning, I put out a forecast, typically. Um, and today, I'm going to talk about water because, again, if you've lived in California for any amount of time, you know how important it is. If we didn't have this storm, we didn't have this storm, we would be talking a whole different thing. We'd be talking about concerns for drought, right? We, because we had been dry for the month of December, essentially, until this happened. Ski resorts were not open. Um, big concerns for at the end of the year, when how much water will we have in these reservoirs? We're going to take a look at what this storm, what this storm series, this atmospheric river, if you will, what it did and what it did for our watersheds and what it means to the rest of the California and in case the, the case of the ski resorts. Ski resorts are a huge um, economy booster, certainly in the Lake Tahoe area, but it's also around the state, Mammoth Mountain all the way north to Palisades. This is Mount Rose, but it, it wasn't happening. This, this, this was dirt uh, a week ago, and now it's not. So the rain mattered. Nearly two feet of rain in much of California, depending where you were. These are rainfall accumulations from California Nevada River Forecast Center, and just contoured in. So if you look here, you go to this spot. This is up by Paradise. Paradise had over 22 inches inches of rain. That's what San Francisco gets in an entire year. So this atmospheric river, which by the way, how we get most of our rain in California. Atmospheric rivers are not new. Atmospheric rivers are um, have been around forever. We call them pineapple connections, tropical connections. You, what, subtro I just call them subtropical moist flow, um, but they've been around forever. And they go all the way back to some of the flooding that we had occur in, in California in the 1950s and in the 1860s, atmospheric rivers, they do it. But they also bring us the bulk of our rain. Our largest surface reservoirs, Shasta and Oroville in the north part of the state, that's why these numbers matter so much. Those two surface reservoirs account for much of the water supply to Southern California, into the rest of California, into the farmers. There's other sources. There's localized reservoirs, like in Marin County, there's a number of reservoirs, up Santa, Santa Clara County, but the big ones, these matter. And they got aggressive rainfall and snow in the watersheds, and, and, and they came up a lot, like 20, 30 feet of elevation change in these reservoirs during the storm. Uh, in a reservoir, that much water moving up in a big reservoir. Eureka right now is 119% of rainfall average. We'll move to Southern California. They're well above average as well. This is in the Palisades where they received almost 24 inches of rain. So that's why Los Angeles had problems. I would say most of this weather system, this, this series of storms that we just got through with, were beneficial most of them, and then until you get down here. And then this became, they don't have the big surface reservoirs. They don't have the opportunities to hold as much water. A lot of that water runs off, creates mudslides, debris flows, and what have you. And that is, in fact, what happened. Um, Palisades, like I said, they had over, you know, a couple feet of, of, of rain. Mammoth Mountain got about oh, I'm seeing over five feet of snow. Palisades Tahoe, I just got off the phone with Bill Hudson. He's up there skiing today, and he says, listen, dude, we got, we got five feet of snow at the top of the mountain, which was what we forecast, but we're concerned that it was like, for a while there, it didn't look like it was going to happen, but the last 24 hours of this event, it did. So these are rainfall accumulations, just kind of numbers, so you can kind of look at, the, this is over six inches of rain over the course of the storm period. And you can see there's the Mount Shasta, or Lake Shasta watershed. 14 inches of rain. And then you can see the Lake Orville watershed in here, which was over 14, 15 inches of rain. And like I said, Paradise came in well above that. So very aggressive storm, atmospheric river. We get them, we need them. And if we don't have them, we like this didn't happen last week, this reservoir wouldn't be well over or even letting water out well over average for this time of year. The water year starts October 1st, so that's kind of the numbers that we're referencing. This is um, snow water equivalent. So this is what's locked up in the mountains. So I said five feet of snow up around Palisades, let's say. Well, that's 
captured now. It sits there. It's like a, it's a bank account that will slowly melt in the spring and f trickle in as much as, in this case, what's up there, what, what, what's up there now, 14 inches of rain, of water will flow. That's a lot of, of, of stored water. There will be much more by the end of the year. But right now, this is where we are in terms of water uh, equivalents in the Lake Tahoe, Sierra Nevada area and around Mammoth Mountain. So we're doing really well. And that water that trickles in is the water that trickles into the creeks and streams and into the aquifers. Aquifers are a whole nother deal, right? They're what's under the, under the surface, ground wells, from Redding all the way south to Bakersfield. That's, it's a, just a giant lake under there. It used to be a lot fuller. But it's it trickles the the Sierra Nevada trickles into that so as all surface water bodies do. Okay, so these are rain gauges or river flow gauges. Pardon me, at these strategic points, and it's just saying, listen, this is the percent of average of water flowing through this river gauge for the for since October first. This is how much above the normal would be. So normally, October 1st, you would see 100%, right? This is right. But when you get into 207%, 203%, this is the flow. This is all from snow melt, whatever's melting, um, uh, uh, soil moisture, and then runoff. And this is what we're looking at. So we're seeing significant runoff at the rivers and the creeks, uh, 236 Depends where you are, San Francisco. Some of these numbers get low, but I think they're smaller. I know they're smaller creeks and not as, as consequential. And then in Los Angeles, you see they don't have places to hold water. So you're not seeing a lot of river flow. So that's why they are showing such slow numbers. But overall, the indexes have been awesome. And this is the um, eight station index. You've heard of these. These are useful in that it's basically snow runoff, rain runoff. Again, it's kind of that you know, uh, soil moisture runoff. And this is how we get, just, you know what it is? It's like a rain gauge for all of Northern California's watershed. It's a one rain gauge. And it just, it, it, it quantifies the snow, the runoff, the melt, everything. And so what we're looking at here, it's, it's a little granular, but right now here's where we are, right here, that nah, little tip. And this blue line represents average, okay? And this down here, this time runs from left to right, right? That's the timeline running from left to right. And so right now we are about where we should be a little above average for this time of year, actually quite a bit above the actual average. And we're not far behind what we saw in 1982. We're actually kind of spot on where the 1982 rain event occurred. So this is runoff, a rain gauge, but you know, eight stations showing us the average. And so we are ahead of where we should be for this time of year. And we are on track to do something like we did, certainly like what we did last year. See, that's above average. So that's good. And this is a huge indicator of the health of California because water is the lifeblood of California. And you know it if you're a farmer, if you know it, if you buy fruit at this grocery store and vegetables, water, if we don't get water, things cost more. We don't have a, our, 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 our GNP goes way down. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really huge part of the state. It always has been, it always will be. So the eight station index matters. Look at 2016, 2017. I forgot how wet that year was, 94 inches. So anyway, that's we can go check out Southern California. This is what feeds the Northern California reservoirs. Thumbs up, Gold, grade A. This is the six station index, same idea, rain gauge for Southern California. And you can see right now, right here, about above average, which is awesome. And this is the average line. And then these are the these are past years, and you can see 82. 82 always ranks up there. That was a big El Nino year, 1982. Remember it well. That was the year of the big avalanche up at uh, Alpine. But the thing you do notice here, check this out. So December, if you look here, we had in November it was very wet, and then December it went dry, and then we just had that big rain and it popped up again. So we were at, we were just getting to below average or at average at the, when this storm hit. So the storm couldn't have picked a better time to show up. So the indexes are looking good. The eight station index, rain gauge for Northern California watershed, the six station index. These are, these are um, granular uh, report cards for the North and the South, right? And that's, this is really important. Can't stress it enough. If you're new to the state of California, water is the whole game. It's the whole game. Um, and, you know, I've, we go back, we've talked, I've talked on my 
forecasts, I do, you know, we talk a little bit about history and stuff. And one of the things I, I was a kind of a undergraduate was climatology at Berkeley and uh, physical geography major, but as a climatology emphasis. And one of the things we talked about was how long the droughts in California can last. And so they would do, and back when I was in, this is like in 82, but they would do tree ring samples. And you could look at the tree rings, right? Dendrochronology is what it's called. And you could look at the tree rings and the thickness of the tree ring would tell you how much rain you got. And so some of these, some of these tree rings from these very old trees went back and were showing periods of 10-year drought, 20-year drought, 50-year drought. Oh. And there's all sorts of theories about Native American tribes in the Central Valley and how that corresponded with the tree rings getting really narrow in drought, long periods of drought, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of drought. So very interesting. And so these things, the things I'm showing you now are things that matter to your pocketbook and that matter to the health of, of probably the most awesome state ever. Um, thanks for tuning in. I, I know it's a, it's a little bit of, it's, it's kind of dry topic-y stuff, but I think, again, since it matters and since that's what people are going to talk about, I think people are already starting to buzz a little bit because we've got a dry period coming up right now for a few days, then we're going to get back into it. Um, and so it's important to, to be aware of, of what's happening around us in terms of the water, how much snow we got, and what it really means. It's, it, it, there's, I showed people skiing at first, but it's not about skiing. It's not about, it's not about one thing. It's about everything. It's about everything. This, the history of this state is defined by water, fire, and earthquakes, and drought. That, I mean, that every, the, if you look at all historically from the Spanish all the way up to current time, it, those are the things that define this state. And they're things really that we can't control. I know. So we're looking at, uh, this is the reservoir level right now. Lake Shasta is at 118% of where it typically is for this time of year, Lake Shasta. So Lake Shasta is up here, 118%. These are all the reservoirs. Uh, Lake Orville, 109%. Bill, why isn't it more? It could be more because you got to keep some flood control in there, right? They literally, I, I was doing, looking at the numbers this morning. I wrote them down somewhere, but it was like, you know, 10, 20, 30 feet of rise on some of these mount on some of these on these two big reservoirs, at least 10, 15 feet came up during this event. Shows how important it is for these atmospheric rivers. The rest of California, just looking at the reservoirs, um, and you know, it depends. Those the two big ones are the ones I think about. But you get down to Southern California, they got a big one. What's it? 195 St. Vincent's Res, Lakeside. Um, storage capacity percent of normal, 195 percent of normal. Um, so yeah, you got a bunch of reservoirs. But in terms of res that matter, Lake Orville, Lake Shasta, this is the new spillway. At um, I think that's the new spillway at Lake Orville. This is the percents of average for again for the res or for the um, dams. So Lake Shasta. Let's see if I can get you in here. Lake Shasta, Shasta Dam is at 118% uh, of storage capacity. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then we take a look at the mountains again where there's plenty of snow. I think I can get this live picture. This shot, this, um, shot of, yeah, this shot of heavenly today is beautiful. The snow is awesome. So in the big picture, it's amazing what, what we got and, and how important it is. So there's two things I want to point out here. How much water matters to the state and how atmospheric rivers are a part of that. And without the atmospheric river and all the headlines and without the flood warnings and without all this stuff we have that we went through this last week, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have a state. California's not California anymore. It can't function. It can't, it, it will, it'll limp along for a while, but we can't have these things shut off. And so we can't really treat them like the boogeyman, like this is a scary event. This, this, this monster storm's coming and it's gonna, you know, it's like it, you, you see it, I was watching some of the network stuff, even the Weather Channel, and they're like, it's almost like it's something coming to get us. And it's not. It's something to come to help us. And if there are issues with water, so often those issues are because of, we built in a floodplain, we built in a slide zone. And I'm not saying don't do that. I, I've lived in slide zones because I love a pretty view. I mean, we all, that's just the nature of the place. But we have to accept the fact that these storms are going to come and these storms are needed. So it's kind of awesome. And today to me is a celebration of last week's weather event and what's coming. There's more rain and snow coming this year. And right now, like I say, we are well above average for our water. 
It's awesome. Okay, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you back here tomorrow. I'll do tune in Sunday. I'll do something tomorrow for the weather. Tune in. I'm meteorologist Bill Martin. I do a weather forecast pretty much every day during the week, especially when there's weather events on because I love weather. I've been doing it a long time. I'll see you back here.